The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Subarai Productions. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Toku Talk. Bit of a retrospective today. Marcus and Jacob here. We just finished uh, with Kamen Rider. Yeah, we reviewed Super 1 and that was, that was it. That was last. <laughs> Feels weird, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this time we're just like, you know, we'll do it as a whole. Do the retrospective after we've actually seen everything. Probably seen Kudo, but... I There's a few it. of these that I haven't seen, but... Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just... But you've seen everything now, so yeah. So yeah, oh, we thought we, we thought we'd just like run through the series real quick and give our thoughts on everything and how the franchise has evolved and improved and degraded throughout the years. Supremely that evolved portion, because there's such a shift uh, after a little bit with this show. You know, the original writer came out in seventy one, and mm-hmm. then, like there was really the rise of anime that happened over that same period, at least, yeah. especially with Gundam and how Bandai was selling things, Sunrise. And all of that started selling model kits and stuff. And, like, that's when the decline of Rider really happened. And then the hiatuses and stuff. Mm. Um, but, yeah, Kamen Rider is such a weird animal in some cases. Especially when you look at something like the original Rider going over 98 episodes. And then 52. And then 35. And then 24. <laughs> and then 39. And then it took a couple years for it to come back. Yeah. Uh, and then it took it, a bit of a break after Sky Rider. Or after Super 1. Yeah. Well, it took a couple years after Stronger. Oh. And then it, oh, yeah. it needed another break. Uh, because both of the shows they came out with were mid. <laughs> and apparently, you know, the shows weren't received that well. Uh, they had that cross, but that was just a special for the 10-year anniversary, or 15-year anniversary at that point. It's just like, hey, we got this thing. Let's try and remind everyone it exists. Yeah. And then they came out with Black. And, you know, I think this is the point. 1987. Because for a lot of the Showa era, it was just like, we don't have or- overarching stories. That's not a thing that we did. No. I think the closest thing we ever get to that is in Stronger. Yeah. I think they're uh, Stronger with um, with Tackle. Yeah. The way with the, with her with her character, you know, passing away partway through the show. Stronger having to deal with the repercussions of that. And then later on in Super 1, they do play around with multi-episode arcs a little bit. Yeah. But aside from that, it's mostly, you know, as we've said many times in our show air reviews. Come back next week to find out what come, happens. Come back next week to find what happens. It's, It'll be the same Here's thing. a clue. It's the same. <laughs> and then we get to Kamen Rider Black. And we talked about this in our review, how the opening of this show is so much more stylized and so... Not just the theme song, but... <laughs> but the opening sequence, yeah. where it's just here, where, where there's no dialogue in this in the beginning part of this show for the first five or so minutes, maybe even longer than that, of just him running through the streets, being over, being sensory overloaded by everything that's going around him. And... It's one of the few times that we ever get the feeling of like, oh, this person has gone through something. has gone through something and is also maybe not human. Like his cyborg body is taking in so much that it's like overloading his senses. Yeah, and you can see like that stark difference. This, there's 16 year difference between the original writer and Black, mm-hmm. and there's such a stark difference as to how the stories are getting told. I mean, once we're gonna get into Getting to our Sentai retrospective, it'll show up a lot more there <laughs> because it's a lot more obvious when that happens. But here it's just like, oh, we don't have anything. It's just writer stops bad guy every single week. Stop shocker, girl shocker, die shocker, um, God. Whatever Amazon's buildings were. <laughs> I was about to say two, but that's something else. No, that's that's the greatest. That's Mask Man, right? Yes, two. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the beginning in the black is just like, alright. Wasn't one of them Death Dark? Yes. That might have been Metal Hero. It might have been. Yeah. Either way, subtlety incarnate. Yeah. <laughs> but in this case, at least for black, it's just like, okay, we can actively tell a story with this. Mm. Which is something that, of course, will end up going on later. Black has a little bit of an issue. Up at, like, there's that middle part for about 10 to 15 episodes where, like, really nothing was happening. Mm-hmm. And then Shadow Moon showed up. And that's what I think people really got invested because Black was so popular it got a sequel. It shouldn't have, but it got a sequel. Um, in retrospect, it shouldn't have. <laughs> but 
Yeah, Black was just so unbelievably popular, how it told its story, the drama, the melodrama of it all. People really latched on to that. And you could sort of see just like a shift, I guess a little bit in Japanese culture is like, oh, we want something to really attach to Mm. that wasn't present those 16 years before and when the original writer came out and that got as popular as it did. Mm. I mean, yeah, they had Ultra at that point, but Ultra really wasn't doing it either as far as I know. Do you think Black is the first time they ever really got a full fleshed out character to latch onto as opposed to just the brand itself? Yeah, I mean, let's face it. We love Hiroshi Nuji <laughs> as V3. And the man has just a lot of charisma that really brings him into this thing. Mm. In all honesty, he did not have his Hour Ranger. But, like, something like he Black. He as an actor, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's something like Black, just like, oh, we can really latch onto this. Like, bringing up Hiroshi Miyuchi again. It's like, we have Zubat and uh, Owl Ranger, but he really showed how, just how strong he was as a character on his own in V3. But that's because, as we've seen in other shows that were structured the same way around this time, mm-hmm. it doesn't work for everybody. X. Amazon. Stronger had that a little bit in all honesty. I'll give him that. The man had a little bit of charisma. Mm-hmm. But it, it at the same time couldn't latch on to it like you could with Black Story. The things that he mm-hmm. went through with his brother. And the fact that at the end of the day, he had to kill his brother. Yeah. It was just like, oh, oh. And that's the note they leave you on. Yeah. Because, because you know, uh, Shadow Moon's like final words to him are, you have killed your brother. You're going to live with that. And then they ruin it. And because they brought him back in Black RX for a reason. Mm-hmm. The character is popular. Black RX is doing as well. Let's bring back this character who is popular and is yeah. off of within the episode. And this is why I say... Something they have a habit of doing in Japan. If a character is popular and they die, bring them back. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's also... <laughs> just, say they were, just say they were asleep or something. It's also like you see during this, during this time period. And it's not something that we see going forward. Is the sequel aspect. V3 is a sequel. Mm. Um, all of the first several writers are in continuity with each other. Yeah. Uh, Black RX is a sequel. Um, a direct sequel starring yeah. the same person. And it just, you know, it, it it's such an odd thing to see like, oh, from here on out though, everything is going to be on its own. Even mm. with the movies with Shin, Zio, and Jay. Mm. Although I think Shin was supposed to start something and it didn't happen. It feels like it was. Yeah. Shin it's does... A Shin, uh, yeah, coming. The movie is called Com- Shin Kamen Rider Prologue. Yeah, it does feel like this is going to be the first chapter in an ongoing saga of a new type of Kamen Rider. Yeah, and I do really. That's one of the things I do really admire about Shin is the fact that it is truly a monster movie. Yes, <laughs> it's a monster movie. His design is very grotesque. The way he transforms is not. Your traditional henshin sequence, it's more like it's more like a werewolf movie. It's weird because you end up seeing, like, the way that this movie is stylized, especially, you see it. We, we watched the Hokkaido movie, and Shin and Hokkaido feel a lot like each other, in all honesty. Like, the way that things are shot, how, uh, like, so, I guess the action is sort of built the same way between the two movies. Um, At least to me. I feel like the Hokkaido one was much more stylized. Yeah, it definitely was. Much more, and, much more stylized, not just in terms of... Well, Shin came out in 92. True, true enough, but like also Hokkaider, Hokkaider feels like Terry Gilliam. Well, that's it, because, it feels like if Terry Gilliam made Kamen Rider, that's what Hokkaider would be. That's because it was Garo pre-Garo, because it was the same guy who did Garo. <laughs> Set in everyone's favorite Jesus town. Yeah. Goodness, oh, Jesus me. Goodness me, that was so silly. So stupid. But, I mean... And then you see the evolution. You end up getting there. Unfortunately, Ishinomori passes away, but we end up getting his what he wanted in Kuga. And you know, we almost got a sequel in Nagito. Didn't happen. They they dropped that mm-hmm. soon on. But Kuga is just it. It feels and, and we've said this multiple times before. Kuga is the outlier. Kuga doesn't feel like any other writer show. Hmm. Kuga is just like this is pretty much a drama first, a toku second. Because you end up spending so much time with these characters, which is something they brought in from Black. Black, um, and this is why, like, Black is really that halfway point for how Ryder is sort of going going forward, mm. outside of a couple of exceptions, which I'm talking about later. Um, but yeah, Kuga Kuga Nagito is just like Kuga's Kuga's that one. <laughs> it's it's uh. <laughs> 
And, I mean, you end up seeing a lot of the same things going uh, going forward, although we end up getting some changes. Shadow Moon wasn't called a Kamen Rider because he was a bad guy. Yeah. And then we get to Ryuki. And then we get to Ryuki <laughs> where everyone is a Kamen Rider. Yeah. We have our monsters, but there there isn't any, like, malicious, like, evil empire controlling them out to, out to conquer the world. They're just, they're just monsters. They're out there. That's something and that then we have our, And then we have our death game, and we have Oja. We have, we have like, a, fir- a first, like, true evil common writer. Yeah. It's just so odd seeing this. I mean, you sort of stop having that centralized villain, hmm. I guess. Somebody's sleeping. Okay. Yeah, you, you have that centralized villain. Sort of. You have the Gurongi. Mm-hmm. You have God in Nagito's case, I guess. <laughs> you have Ryuki, which is just like, oh, everybody's fighting against each other. And then there's Odin mm-hmm. and Oja being the bad guy. Um, Fize is such an example. <laughs> it, I mean, yeah, <laughs> an example of what? Go on. It, it's an example of a new aid not being stopped. <laughs> That's what Fai is an example of. Nobody was checking his work. Yeah, and it's weird to see like the ones that don't have those centralized main villains, like Kuge. Like, yeah, the Gronga are there, but they're sort of all scattered, mm. like Akito, where it's just sort of one guy not knowing what to do half of the time. Mm. Um, Ryuki spread out, smart brain, uh, Hibiki, a mess. Um, I mean, it became a mess. Hibiki, they were definitely trying to do something different for the first, like, 33 or so episodes. It feels like a growth of the original writer, in all honesty. It's like, mm. yeah, we had that writer club and everything, but mm. this time it's actually, like, the active writer speaking to, I guess, just the one writer kid and helping him grow as a person. It feels like an evolution of the original writer to me a little bit mm. in that case. It's uh, a little bit that way. You had that writer club in the original, and they just helped out, you know... Like the Rider Scouts, you mean? Yeah, the Rider Scouts. It, I, I think Hibiki is just sort of an evolution of that. You also end up seeing things from the original in Blade. Um, like what? Oh, we, we end up taking on the powers of the bad guys. Oh, okay. And then we end up turning into the bad guy. Hmm. That got fixed in Zeo. Um, Kabuto is sort of that last one before the shift. Uh, we have the cool. He he reminds you a lot of stronger, and he's supposed to. Mm. Um, you know he's the cool guy. He does all the things, and he's the mean. Yeah, he's the he's the coolest one, the best one. It's not his the most report. powerful one, but he is not the one that we're following throughout yeah. the story. It's the other guy. What, Hibiki what's, what's his name? Kagami. Kagami. Okay. Uh, Hibiki and Kabuto sort of feel similar in that main, at least at the beginning, uh, where. It's somebody else's story, but they're not the titular character. Mm. And it's sort of weird when you go back and look at Ryuki, where it's a dual protagonist again, like we had in the original writer. Mm-hmm. After they both came back, <laughs> after they, after what seventy episodes when it was just, when it was the two of them together. Yeah. Now, how would I gotta ask you? How would you describe if you had to sum it up the Heisei writers prior to Deno? Um, do you do you think it melds together thematically well? Or is Kuga, yes. or is Kuga really the outlier, and the rest feel like they could fit together? Kuga is the outlier in the way that it, the show is structured and how okay. things are fought and things of that nature. But then you end up like those first ones from Kuga to Kabuto. It's about drama. Mm. The drama is the the way like you can see, especially how the way the things are filmed. Things are a little bit more muted mm. for a lot of the shows. Colors don't stand out as brightly. We're watching this for drama, especially because they're starting to be paired with Sentai around this time. Mm. And Sentai is a much superhero more time becomes yeah. a thing. Superhero time, thanks to uh, Alba Ranger and I want to say Fies. Um But yeah, then we end up getting to Deno, and it's just like, all right. And now this is where a structure sets in for the next several years until we get the wizard. Yeah. So from the end of the Heisei to the Neo Heisei leading up to the um, leading up to Gaim, uh, it's going to be a lot of two part episodes. Pretty much, pretty much entirely two part episodes. Part yeah. one, we have our setup. We have we introduce our monster. We have a little bit of a fight. We test each other's strengths. We get to part two. Um, our victim, there's like a twist or revelation about the victim of the week usually, mm-hmm. or someone is hurt, someone is killed, something like that. And then the monster is ultimately defeated. Yeah. 
And somewhere in there, there might be more of a revelation about our villains. Maybe a little hint of what they're planning next. Yeah. And that continues, yeah, for the better part of a couple of years. For better and for worse. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of all of these shows because they do start to feel a little bit too similar because of the way that things are structured. I mean, Kabuto also had like a two-part structure, but it was so much more in the background and compared to being in the foreground. It was just like, you know, these things are happening. It, it, this is the monster that we're fighting. It was not a hard, like... Episode one is Act One. Episode two is Act Two. Yeah. It it really feels like that. Deno moving forward through Wizard. Yeah, and for better or for worse, because it feels upon like it, rewatch, I would definitely say for worse. Yeah, it it feels like it got stuck for a bit, and it's so weird going from the one episode per one for each like you know show mm-hmm. air for the most part up until Black, mm-hmm. and then we and you know in some cases Super One. But and then we end up getting to this, where it's just like, oh, it's that much stretch. It's everything because rather than have fuller arcs, every it's like we have fifty episodes of you know a bunch of little mini arcs, and it's just, and it's just that repeated throughout. Like at the end, like towards the end of the show, you know, our big bad will reveal himself, and uh, Kamen Rider has to fight him. Like, oh, pal- I'm, I'm the big bad guy. I'm the big I bad have guy. all the generals, and they go do the fights. <laughs> and you're just like, okay. And then, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I think like Wizard, when it finally stops, when we have like towards the end where the white wizard finally reveals himself, and then it more becomes more about the two of them fighting, and like we get a little bit of revelations here and there about side you, characters and such. When you start seeing the toys. And being, it starts to drift away from the formula a little bit. You, you see the toys being pushed to the forefront mm. during this time period, and man, does that. Not very happy. toyetic. Yeah, and you, we'll you'll talk about this. We get to sit as well, um, because you have the ones that are outliers. But in this case, you end up having you know something like four. that we have forty switches. Forty. Sw- yeah, we get O's. a switch. They all do different things. We got a big chunky belt. O's where you have all the all the medals. medals. Count the medals. One, two, and three. I mean, you have the the um, guy memories from W. The mm-hmm. cards. I mean, we had cards before with Blade, but it doesn't mm-hmm. feel like they were the thing. <laughs> The one thing that stands out here is Decade. Decade is the one that stands out, and it's a... Looking back on Decade, it's just weird. It's a how, very weird show. And how, not necessarily like the show is like strange, oh my gosh, this is crazy, but like the structure and what it was that they were trying to do with him. They tried to do two things with Decade. Both they failed at. Um, as an anniversary, they really couldn't give back anybody but Kiba and Blade himself. Mm-hmm. That was it. Yeah. Um, anybody else, it was just like alternate versions of people. They also had to finish it in a movie when they were originally planning on doing another episode. They did finish- see the trailer for it. Yeah. And they don't do it and they finish it in a movie instead. Also, they had to split up from Sentai. Mm-hmm. They needed to split when a show premiered for Ryder and when a show premiered for Sentai. That's why you get Ryder in uh, September, October now, Mm -hmm. and uh, Sentai stays in February. They were both premiering around January, February every year, January, February, March. And they were just so close together that they weren't getting the returns that they wanted. Mm -hmm. So that's why Shin Kenger is the odd one out on the Sentai side Mm -hmm. because it aired a long time. Two writers for the most part. And then we get into Kamen Rider Gaim. Yes, Gaim, where we actually go back to having a much more prevalent, overarching story consequences. Mm. I mean, there were always consequences in the shows beforehand. You know, things happened. They yeah. just kept going along, but they were never really the main focus. We never really cases. had lasting a lasting set of side characters who could be affected by the events of the story as well. Yeah. Mostly they were just in the background. I you mean, look at the show that came before this, you have Wizard, which has a huge supporting cast. Most of them just are just kind of there. Yeah. They don't really do anything. Like, they'll get their one focus episode, like Shunpei, you know, especially. He just gets his one, his two-parter focus episode in the beginning. And then, like, he does nothing for the rest of the show. And then you have this where you have the multiple different uh, dance teams. 
and each one has you know their own little hierarchy. Their Everyone, own every, writer after a little bit. Their own writer after a little bit. Everyone's got their own little every like every they gave everyone at least like something to do. Wasn't always good, but at least they you know were trying to diversify. They set up a mystery at the very yeah, beginning, like who would like who were, who are we dealing with and uh, what are they doing? What happened to the best friend? Oh, he got murdered in the very first episode. Oh, that monster that wasn't retrospective puts puts a heroic moment in a. Bit of a twist. Yes, Gaim himself killed mm. him. And that's still one of the... I think that's... I remember watching that at the time because we watched it live. Yeah. That's still one of the wildest twists that we've had like in a while. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was so good. I was shocked. <laughs> I was shaken. I Shook. was shooketh. <laughs> shooketh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Ryder ends up going on a... Uh, for a bit here. It's a bit. It's a bit of a wave pattern, and then kind of takes, and, and then just kind of takes a big old nosedive. Yeah, you got Drive, which it has that first twenty five episodes of toys, and then it splits off and becomes a much better show in that second half. You got Ghost, which was awful. <laughs> you got you have Ghost, which is which is trying to be a little more. I think Ghost is an example of the show is trying to be a little more kid friendly, trying to be more toyetic, trying to be a little more educational in some ways. But when it tries to be more dramatic, it just kind of falls flat on its face, just winds yeah. up being really disappointed. Then we get into X-Aid. X-Aid ends up being one of the best shows that Ryder has produced in years. Yes. And it's so strong. Yeah, X-Aid has been great. X-Aid was great. It was such a ride watching it every week to week. We got those level one forms early. Mm-hmm. And we were just like, what is this? And then the rest of the show happened. And we were just like, oh, lasting consequences. We have God, man. Mm-hmm. He's the best character because he's meme. <laughs> he's just so meme evil. And, meme incarnate, Dan. He showed up everywhere. He, his little continue to got its own figure because he got so unbelievably popular. Yeah. It's I'm just, not surprised. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, actually, was just such, it was such an up coming off of Ghost. And it really, I think it brought a lot more people back into it. Coming off of the past several Neo Heisei, very bright, very colorful, very lots of dark, v- lots of flash, lots of substance. Talking about the ones yeah. prior to Exade, lots of flash, lots of uh, not, not substance, but flash and sparkle. I guess I'll say, yeah, just a lot of very surface level, pretty. Not a lot going on under the surface for the most part. Yeah, there are exceptions, but then you get to Exade and. It feels like they were finally taking lessons in filmmaking. Yeah. Because this is one of the first... This is like the first Kamen Rider I can remember where I was like, oh, the way this is shot is interesting. Yeah. They are doing interesting things with the way we are shooting just regular dialogue scenes. Yeah. We're doing artistic things with the way we're shooting dramatic scenes. That scene in the pool. Yeah. Where we have him... Uh, what's his name? Parado? Yeah. Oh, submerged God. under the water and the, the hand... Oh. And a hand reaching in to grab him. A like, couple of episodes later. Yeah. Wild. One of the most single artistic things I'd ever seen Kamen Rider do and... That was the that like that was the moment that like Exide was solidified for my favorite common writer until uh, you know a later show Geats. would come along until Geats would come along, yeah. but uh, yeah Exide overall overall fantastic show yeah then you get to build and Zio which are too ambitious for their own good yeah, yeah I think I, th- I think he summed it up perfectly yeah really bad scripts they're trying to do they have really big ideas but the scripts do not uh ser- service them at all it's so weird especially in Bill's case because we see this being done again this year with King Oger but it's done correctly <laughs> where it makes sense like the way it's built up in King Oger in comparison to what Bill did mm-hmm. Bill didn't know what it wanted to do so it felt like it just threw this in here and hoped that it stuck King I, Oger I like, did it I feel like Bill knew what it wanted to do it just did it badly yeah and King Oger just like let's 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 do this right <laughs> let's do it good and we, we're gonna make one of the best shows we've had in years where it's mm-hmm. not just a good si- sentai it's a good damn drama mm. Ugh, Zio was just there um Zero One in the Reiwa era yeah Takahashi comes back after doing X8 he gets he has that issue of the tournament arc, which is probably one of the worst things because it goes on too long. It's, it ruins the show. Yeah. The show never recovers after it. And it really didn't help that code. But that. it does give us... This is one of the first times that we do have hard arcs. Yeah. As far as, like, that go on for multiple episodes. Yeah. They, they've they dabbled a bit in the past, but Z- Zero One is the first time where it really feels like we are structuring this in arcs. We have, you know, the... Beginning setup, we have our tournament, and then moving on into the next one. 
and I think the I think they were on the right track, but again, again, it's not entirely the writers' fault. They were delayed. We did experience production problems with COVID and everything. Yeah. So and those issues happened. Yeah, and then Saber and Revise happen, and they just feel like what's the word I'm looking for? They felt like. They felt like the struggle just couldn't leave for a while. Like none of neither one of the stories were good. Neither one of the shows nope. were good. The arcs weren't good. The characters in Revice they were a little bit better in some cases, but they were also worse in others. Mm. But then Saber is just like this is possibly one of the worst. In, uh, I wanted to call it a Sentai because that's <laughs> because what there's so many be. characters. Yeah, because yeah, they have it, a big team of writers. It just. It didn't know what it to do, what to, what it wanted to do. It was in the middle of COVID, so it really got screwed over. As far as Common Rider proper, I think Saber might be the worst one. Um, because because I because I still think Amazon's is worse. <laughs> what do you think? It's a tie between Saber and Ghost. Hmm. Yeah, I. It's just it's really bad. All the way around. It's really annoying to watch both of these shows back to back. And just mm-hmm. like, why is there no improvement? And then we got lucky. So. <laughs> well, we haven't finished Gachard yet. Who knows if it picks up. But then we get to Apparently Geats. And one then one we get to before. Geats. And it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it's just the best. It's really good. Geats is really, really good. It, th- you know, once again, X Ray's writer comes back after doing Zero One. Mm-hmm. We get to this, and it's just like, oh, this feels like a much more structured show. He's learning a little bit from doing the yeah. issues of Zero One and that whole arc in the middle. Take your learning experiences and run with them, yeah. Yeah, and this time it's just like, all right, let's let's give you actual characters. Everybody gets an arc. Everybody gets something to do. We end up going from one point to another. Um, Neon's one of the best characters in this show. Uh, uh, uh. You could say that about pretty much everybody. Time fire! Every, everyone's great. Yeah, everybody in this show. Where it's like great. everyone is perfectly cast. Every part is well written. The the actors all do a great job. The action is great. The suits are the suits. They do interesting things with. Yeah, yeah. It's just really good. You know, we end up following these characters pretty much. It's a the good way. script. The entirety of the show. The only one who I wanted to see come back was my girl Lobo. <laughs> I wanted to see her come back so bad. She was the one I was really excited. Like, when they were bringing back a lot of people at the end, I was really hoping she would come back, too. She didn't. I was depressed. Mm. But, like, the show itself is just really, really well-structured, really well-done. Had a lot of fun. Was very flashy, but in a good way. It it just had... It was good all around. That I think the things that um, Saber and Revise were missing the most was, was just the ambiance that ends up surrounding it mm. and the gravitas that situations need. It feels like we couldn't get those in Saber and Revise, but we got it a lot more in Geats. Again, it comes down to the script. I've harped on this many times, and I will continue to do so because it is very important. But well, I think in this case, it's just those two, those two shows are already done, and so is Geats. Yeah. And it's just like, we can see it's like, oh, where is the gravity of the situation that a lot of this needed? Mm. And we got that in Geats. It does end up coming down to the writer and who the script, uh, you know, script writer and screenwriter. And I mean, it's, it's a sum of its parts thing, yeah. but like... Talking about like gravity of situations, I think Geats does a great job of using all of its elements to really draw you in and invest you in what's going on and yeah. who and you know who's who, what's doing what, and what's you know what is at stake. Yeah. And then the prior ones, I think that was there. It was just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> For the most part, yeah. Uh, I mean, we also do have a couple of remakes. Couple, couple of remakes, remakes, couple of movies. The first and the next Amazon's Black Sun and Shin Kamen Rider. Black Sun is. One that I kind of keep glossing over in my head because it's not because pr- it's not like pr- part of the proper canon, yeah. but it's a retelling. It cannot be estimated. It cannot be understated how good that show is. Yeah, it's really that good. show is utterly fantastic. Yeah, because I because th- I I think about you know like prior to Geats, it was I was just like so disappointed with the writer after X Eight, like every single one of those shows. I was just like, oh god, yeah. this is terrible. But then Black Sun comes along, and it's like. It, it is the kind of mach- it's Amazon's but good is how I would describe it. Is like it's, like I said, I like I know you I know you like season one. You like yeah. season one of Amazon's, yeah. but speaking you know speaking just for myself, what I took from it is we are it takes that mature storytelling, but it takes it in a way that is that actually feels like it was written for adults by adults, yeah, and not. By teenage edgelords for teenage edgelords. 
I mean, we haven't really talked about the first and the next, like, at all, really. Uh, we Not much both. to say. We yeah. watched both. We reviewed both. They're, they both kind of suck. <laughs> they Yeah. I mean, we ended up getting Shin Kamen Rider, though. We got Shin Kamen Rider I think last was, year. Like I said, I think Shin, Shin Kamen Rider was okay. It just had things in it that I wasn't a fan of. <laughs> I, I rewatched it. Not uh, sometime last year because it was on Amazon Prime. It might still be there, mm-hmm. but um, I it's like the things that I didn't like kept sticking out to me more, and the things that I liked seemed seemed a little too few or far far between. I get, yeah, the movie's not bad. No, it's not bad. But, not as good uh, as Shin Ultraman. No, it's not as good as Shin Ultraman. That was better. It's nowhere near as good as Godzilla minus one. You know that was a masterpiece, but um. Yeah, overall, getting to see Kamen Rider on the big screen in 2023, yeah. g- good times were had. Yeah, Kamen Rider is such a weird one. I mean, we ended up having a gigantic break in, in the 90s. Yeah. But, you know, and we've had these waves of up and down. We might be on a little bit more of a down again after Gates. But it's so it was, interesting. It was just a line graph that was just going this, and then it shot up through the ceiling with Gates, and now it's just... Yeah. At least for the first seven episodes of Gachard, I, I hope it picks up. We, we shall see. We'll see. After they get past the toys, it might get better. But, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, once again, it, it's interesting to see where it's going. It's interesting to see where it will be going. Um, we have a bit before we end up getting to the Sentai version of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a long while because we still have at least another year and some change of us catching yep. up the shows amongst our uh, the rest of the shows that we'll be doing this year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Also, we didn't talk about Kamen Rider G, but that's because none of us have seen it. And we just know it's about wine or champagne or something. It but, is? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's a weird one. But yeah. Uh, let champagne. Us know, let us know what you think about Rider as a whole. Please do. Yeah. Everywhere from up from 71 to now. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to join us all the things. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching.